Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Bro channel. Today I am pleased to welcome my better half, my inspiration, my muse, Arliss aka Mrs. Desperado. Welcome Mrs. Desperado. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, so. so I was going to say sorry for my absence. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You're busy. Anyway, uh, today we're going to review a film that we saw together and we were very impressed by this particular film. And so we wanted, we thought it would be a good opportunity to do something together and to comment on this particular film. In fact, you heard about this somewhere because I hadn't heard of it. I did. I Well, I saw the, the previews for it. I started reading a lot of the reviews and it was so 50-50, either loved it or hate it. And that's right up my alley that I got to see it. Yeah, yeah. We had to see what we thought about it. And so we had tickets for it and I had never heard of it. And I got to say, it was really interesting. It was really interesting, and one of the things is it stars our uh, Arizona girl, Emma Stone. So From Scottsdale. We, yeah, we're always happy to see something with her in it. She is adorable, and a great actress as well. And so it was something we talked about for many days afterwards. And since, last yeah. night, in the kitchen. Yeah, Continue and <laughs> and now there's one for Academy Awards. We've got to talk about it again. Yes. We're talking, of course, about the 2023 Searchlight Pictures film, Four Things. Uh, so the the plot it's it's interesting it's really weird it's it's kind of like a takeoff on uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and in this case the mad scientist is actually teaching at a medical school and he looks so weird he's played by Willem Dafoe perfect casting for that and he looks so weird he's got like stitching on his face i thought he himself was an animated corpse but i guess that's not the case no he was he was not to give too much of it away you've got to see it so there there will be very little or yeah very small spoilers but um he was abused or experimented on by his father in his youth yeah and he said his father i thought i thought he meant his creator but in any case it's it's pretty weird <laughs> it's kind of disturbing and uh, so because like he's got he, he's got one, part of his digestive system is removed, so he has to have this weird, like, chemical set up every time he eats, and he, he like, burps these giant bubbles. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty funny in a, in a kind of a sad way. So anyway, he has, his name is Godwin Baxter, and he has created a creation of his own, sort of like the Frankenstein monster, only this is a lovely young woman uh, whom he has named Bella. Bella Baxter. Yeah, and... It just so happens that she had killed herself. She had jumped off a bridge and she was pregnant. And what this mad scientist did is he took the brain of the fetus and he planted it into her body. Because I guess, you know, she was, her mind was gone, you know. And so she's like an, an infant in a woman's, an adult's body. And so it's very interesting, her progression, as she starts out. As, it, it's very... It's very whimsical. It's very fairy tale like. Yes, exactly. They called it a fairy tale. A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of the reviewers. And it's based on a book, a 1992 book by a Scottish guy, Alistair Gray. And so, unfortunately, he didn't live to see this cool movie. It would have been awesome if he would. He died in 2019. But uh, anyway, I might actually read that book at some point. So the first thing you notice about the movie, I think, the first thing I noticed about it is it was in black and white. You know? Correct. And, and, and again, the director, whose name is? Uh, Yorgos, uh, I have the, this is written down, Yorgos Lanthimos. <laughs> He's Greek. He did um, Dog Chews. If you haven't seen that, that's a very dark. Very uh, disturbing. Very disturbing. <laughs> disturbing. Um, but he also did The Favorite with Emma Stone. Haven't seen that one yet. It's on my list. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, so he's got some other stuff out there. Um, this certainly isn't his first. Yeah. So it starts out very old school. It's like a 1930s movie or something. And, you know, much like um, much like Wizard of Oz, it starts out in black and white and it goes to color. But unlike Wizard of Oz, it has a secondary stage. It goes through this crazy kind of false color stage where everything's like more brilliant than reality, which is pretty cool. Which, which I think symbolizes 
in in my mind the the childlike part of her progression so black and white as an, an infant you're only taking in what what you yeah. see but then uh, she wants to go out she wants to have an adventure uh, she calls herself an adventurer um, and so it turns to color and it is it is vibrant is is an excellent uh, word word for it because it's just shocking color it's in, like a 1960s in some, postcard yeah it's, it's, cra <laughs> oh. it's crazy yeah it's crazy but it it really um is true to her now adventurous part of of her um self-discovery now she's out there and she sees these these colors the music is is odd it's it's yeah. strange but it's familiar um everything about this movie feels familiar and i think it's the human condition i just yeah, yeah it, it it just took me i just absolutely uh loved the um the cinematography who was who was because he won too right the cinematography yeah um no the cinematography did not win oh, it, it should have it was nominated uh, costume design won makeup and hairstyling and production design yeah, her her costume. I mean, let's talk about that just Holly for a Waddington. second. Holly, and I love the name Holly too. It's it's yes. it's close to my childhood nickname, nickname, which wasn't Holly, but it's no. close. <laughs> um, and her, you you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of movie posters that she has these very avant garde, very uh, puffy, a lot of ruffles and a lot of ruffles on the top, and yeah. then she has a slip. <laughs> uh, and boots, they're bare legs and, and boots bare and, legs very shocking for the we, 1890s we have grandchildren and we can't tell you how many times uh we come into a room and they've taken off their pants yeah so, <laughs> so it's just yeah. again it's true yeah. it's true it's familiar to us uh as as people and as growing so she's, a, she's like a child she, basically yes and then it it goes into where the, she has these lavish gowns they're beautiful but they're unusual they're strange just like her because yeah. she's not going to take again like a child what everybody else wears it doesn't it doesn't yeah. matter we can put a t-shirt around her neck and call ourselves batman yes. so well not anymore <laughs> since since that whole debacle at walmart but um <laughs> kidding um but but her journey is also within the cinematography it's within the set design it's within her costuming yes, and, yes that's true. and although only a gorgeous woman could get away with no makeup except for eyebrows and, and no clothing and, and some scenes, and some scenes <laughs> which we'll get you in a yes. moment yeah uh, but anyway so um so yes it's 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 very the, the colorful part is very fairy tale like yeah. And very very steampunkish because it yes. takes place in that era, and you see all the um, you know the old cityscapes and all the old scenes. And the book took place in Glasgow, and the movie takes place in London. Of course, they had to move it to London, but nonetheless, it's very cool. They have this old school medical school. He's lecturing. Godwin is lecturing, and he's got the cadaver down there, and he's he's showing how to do an autopsy and whatnot. And the students are sitting up in the I don't know. They probably still do that, but it's probably not so in the formal. Like you know, an operating a theater. theater. And so one of the characters, Max, is introduced because he's one of the medical students in there. The okay. other guys are kind of bullying him because he's obviously an outsider. You know, he doesn't look very British, you know, and that kind of thing. And so he becomes the assistant and he is helping out with Bella because she's like a child. And, and also documenting her progress. Yes, because, that's, it's part of the study. Because yeah. she's she's advancing so rapidly. And that's also with her hair. Her hair ends up down close to her ankles. Um, and again, the, the, um, that her, her growth is very quickly. Yeah. And Godwin, who she calls God, um, not in a disrespectful way, but, but because it's short for Godwin. But we don't know that at first. She's calling no, him God. Calling and, him. and it's like, okay, well, I guess... He did create her, <laughs> but it's it's almost yeah. uh, again childlike. Yeah. Um, and but we, we got to say though, as much as we say childlike, this is a very erotic movie. Yes. I mean, she, she she's got a child's mind in an adult's body, and yes. so she doesn't have any boundaries. She doesn't have any right. you know the traditional Victorian morality, which is why um, the character Duncan, played by Mark Ruffalo, another fantastic acting job. He's kind of a scoundrel. 
and he comes in and kind of swoops her away. He says, oh, this is lovely young woman. She's got no scruples. And I'm going to have this fa well, fantastic time with her. She has childlike yes. no shame. Again, yes, again. no pants. Right. Child <laughs> right. Childlike, yeah. uh, which is endearing to those yes. of us wild children yeah. who... Um, People who grew up in the 70s. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, who... who don't even worry about what other people yes. think, uh, which is a great lesson if you haven't yeah. um, had that journey yet. Have yeah. it because it's very uh, it's very wonderful to grow up and 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 not care what other people think and just have a good time yeah. and and love your family. But anyway, sorry. Well, it's a very interesting um, character. But, but let's get back to the yeah. to the the erotic part of it. You know, a stern warning not for children. It yeah, is, it is. At, at times very graphic she refers to it as furious jumping yes <laughs> uh and, and self-pleasure yes which is where it begins right with fruit, cucumber with fruit <laughs> um and then when her nanny is crabby or a maid i'm not really sure what she yeah. is she doesn't like her the nanny doesn't like her yeah but she says you're crabby i, I have a solution for you <laughs> so it grabs an apple and goes to give it to her so it is very, very dark sense of humor, but it is very funny. Yeah. Um, this this author is really able to hone down um, the um, the humorous parts of this, even in the midst of this very strange yeah. uh, circumstance that Bella finds herself in. And of course, throughout the movie, she doesn't know that. You don't find out until about twenty or thirty minutes into the movie. Uh, what happened? How did she come what to is, be yeah, what is created with, with her? What's up with her? But who is she then? Yeah. So who am I? She's not I her know. mother. She's not her child. She's kind of both. She's kind of both. Yeah. So, but, um, so it's very interesting. It's, it's the character progression. You know, Ruffalo is hilarious because, because she kind of takes him for a ride. I mean, he's going to take advantage of her and then she just is driving him insane. He's like, he's in an asylum, you know, eventually <laughs> shouldn't give that away, but but she's like driving him crazy because she refuses to abide by the rules. She's doing things that are absolutely uh, und not done in that era. And so, but um, so we definitely recommend you seeing it as long as you've got an open mind, as long as you don't mind, you know, some graphic sexuality. And then, you know, she's a pretty gal. I feel like I've turned in my grandparents because I say, you should eat something. You are starving. You are too thin. You don't look healthy. <laughs> she's kind of skinny. Yeah, she's kind of skinny. But anyway, um, anyway, it's it's a lot of fun, and she does a fantastic job. And she definitely deserved the Oscar. We, she really did. And we were saying she ought to win an Academy Award she, for this, and absolutely. she did. And and I was glad yeah. to hear that the costuming yeah. did um, yeah. um, win something because the costuming itself tells Bella's story. The music tells her story. The um, the yeah. cinematography tells her story. Yeah. Um, it's all part of the progression. And then, yeah, and then in the end, she comes into her own and into, um, I think, a little piece. I mean, yeah. I think after you've adventured and you've been out there, then you then you are very happy yeah. to sit on your porch and drink champagne. Yes. And, um, and think about your travels. So yeah. please uh, go see it. I absolutely, uh, we absolutely loved it. We've talked about it yeah. ever since. Um, highly recommend it. We had we had a big argument about what whether God, God wants a monster or not, and I felt ah. I looked it up. Yes, <laughs> I looked it up. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. So, is there anything you didn't like about it? Um, good question. Um, I I think in the very beginning I was very uh put back. What's the word? Put, uh, taken aback. Taken aback. Thank yeah. you. Taken aback by the the over zealous um. Of, of the of the self love, uh, I don't I don't want to get you. Yeah, <laughs> get you in trouble. It was it was pretty, uh, it was pretty crude. it was very. It's not crude. I disagree. Okay. it's not crude, but it is it is there and it's kind of in your face. Yes. So I really had to step back and and go back to the seventies. Yeah, really. Because <laughs> back in the when when every movie somebody would take their clothes off, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. And you don't see that that much. So days. I I would not call it gratuitous. Um, no, it definitely wasn't the gratuitous. Our, it was definitely uh, part of the story. Yeah. Our daughter um, felt that it was, a, um, you know, maybe 30, 45 minutes too long. 
and I disagree with that. Uh, but I didn't say what I didn't. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, what, what did I not like? Um, well, actually, I'm going to say the ending, but I'm not going to tell you. No, we can't say that. So I can't say that. Yeah, there was a thing about the ending that that that, didn't like. that and it's not a big deal. But in it a way, they kind deal. of went out against your expectations, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Um, but at this, yeah, as far as me, I'd say that. You know, it was it was kind of amazing that she didn't come to a bad end because of her incredible naive, naivete, and I just I just thought that was well. I got yeah. an answer for you, yeah, and that is because she had, she was modeled and she was controlled yeah. by every man in her life yeah. okay. from from the ex from the ex husband as her previous a previous husband yes um, as Godfrey mm -hmm. as um um. Max, the Max, the uh, uh Winneburn, he, he proposed, um, yes, yes, and and you know, not but, Max Winneburn, Max, and then there's um, and Duncan, who is Duncan, the, <coughs> Duncan, who's a lawyer, the lawyer, the he's lawyer, lawyer who is an awful person, he's a terrible person, everybody controls her. <laughs> yes. So, I, I think in the times in the movie where she yeah. is a little bit in danger, there is a man there, and it's written by a man, so yeah, I think he did a good job to show the, the feminism. In yeah. This movie about how she's out there, yeah. um, um, onto herself and, and getting, um, getting the adventures and stuff. And she's very blatant about it. Yeah. This is what I want to do. So this is Max a is a lovable. I'm sorry. Okay. Max is a is a lovable. Um, and you kind of wish he's um, a bit of a cuck. He, he doesn't. He doesn't like. I always. I wish he would have. You know, gone after her because he she's he needs protection. He accepts. He accepts her for who she is. True. That's and, good. And about it. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much our take on it. So, I mean, as you can see, we have a few disagreements, but it was, it was great fun. And it's, it's more fun if everybody takes something different from the movie. You, you don't all get the same experience because they don't hit you over the head with it. They tell, they, a good movie is one that lets you draw your own conclusions. And, and I love that about this movie. And yeah, it was, uh, yeah, Yorgos Lanthimos. The the book was by Alistair Gray. Screenplay by Tony McNamara, who is Australian. Wonderful. So it was very international. Her dialogue, yeah, and and, and her delivery of the yes, dialogue. Yes, it's, it's just amazing. Is is one of a kind. So this has been our review of Poor Things, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, <laughs> starring the lovely Emma Stone and and you know Willem Dafoe and uh, Mark Ruffalo and other great actors. Just incredible, incredible. I, Getting a whole bunch of them, but they're all they're all fantastic. That's all uh, wonderful. Cast. And and uh, yeah, and uh, please comment below if you've seen it. Uh, go see it and uh, let us know. Like and subscribe because it helps us promote this channel. And also check out our books on Amazon. We will put the list of links in the description as always. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios, amigos in the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. extraordinary.